Hello folks and welcome back to Black Bear's Retail and YouTube channel. Uh, today it's yet another vlog. Yesterday I forgot to bring the camera up, uh, so this, uh, just to fill in, this 320A Beamer was in for a two year ceramic coat. It got a single stage machine correction done on it, uh, it brought it up to pretty good correction levels. Uh, all the usuals get done to it as well, full decal and safe wash. Uh, nice deep colour, looks absolutely fantastic. So it does. So the customer should hopefully be picking that up in the next, well, probably about 50 minutes time or so. I'm up quite early. Customer uh, today's car has already dropped his off an Audi A4, which is in for a single stage enhancement detail. So I'm going to get cracked on with the pre washing stages of that. So that's this car, entirely washed and dried, and it's back in underneath these lights. Eh, uh, jeez. <laughs> it's a car that's just touched on earlier on, it's new to the owner, it's not a new car. Uh, however, when it was picked up, the car didn't look like this, which is obvious then that uh, whichever dealer has sold the car has just done the age-old trick of covering the car with a glaze or a really filly heavy, po heavy polish and uh, check out the finish on the paintwork it's uh, pretty, pretty poor uh, it looks as if it's been washed with a Brillo pad maybe a mop uh, yeah it's the, the entire car is covered and this like Wagons, everything. Yeah, real shame. Uh, poor customer. So, that's the reason why it's been dropped in with me in the first place. Shut up, seagull. I'm blowing seagulls everywhere here. It's an absolute pain. Anywho, uh, this today is in for a single stage machine correction. Uh, there is some large scratches along the roof couple on the bonnet and some stone chips that are needing filled so the customers provided me with the paint to fill in the stone chips. The bigger scratches are just uh, the, the basically extra time that gets spent on that. The customers agree they'll just get added on to the final bill. Uh, yeah, game plan is I'm going to touch up these little stone chips. So there's a couple uh, just there and uh, there. Once they've been filled in, uh, I'll give them as much possible time to cure. Uh, stick a heat gun on the, the panel for a wee bit, bring the temperature up a touch. It's, uh, it's not too cold in here today, it's actually quite humid. Uh, but still, bring the temperature up just a touch. And then get those filled in. I'm going to do all the interior first to give it basically a maximum amount of time to get the, that paint cured. And then uh, after that, I'll start machine polishing. My usual routine, I like, start off with the roof, pillars, mirrors, eh, then basically go on to boot lid and then bonnet and then get the car up on the ramp eh, and get all the, the doors, springs, etc. all done. 
didn't do any filming of the wash procedure uh, today. The rain is horrendous. The camera is water resistant but not waterproof and I didn't want to really mess up my camera. So yeah, skipped all that. So what I'll do is I'll do some footage of the wee odd and end pieces I do, such as polishing tailpipes, putting the sealant on the alloy wheels, doing the tyres, etc. And uh, yeah, I'm going to grab a wee coffee now and then I'm going to get cracked on.
Well, that's the exterior all prepped for the machine polishing phase. The interior has also all been done, it's been vacuumed, the glass has been cleaned. The interior dash has all been wiped down. Uh, boot done, also felt like patterning the boot as well. Uh, I don't always put patterns in uh, the materials, but I just felt like it for a wee change, just for a bit of enjoyment. So, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to work out my polish and pad combo for the paint. It is, uh, as I've pointed out and showed you on an earlier part of the video, it's quite badly swirled. There's some deep scratches in it as well. So I'm going to spend a wee bit of time, I'm going to work out what's going to be the best uh, combo for that. And thereafter I'm going to start attacking this paintwork with the... And I'm probably going to hit it with my DA, my Flex DA. And, uh, go over it and get some nice gelling effect as well on the car because it is black. It's a flat black, it's not metallic, so it'll look absolutely fantastic once that's been done. I'm going to crack on and I'm going to get that wee pad combo sorted. Well, polished pad combo worked out. Just give you a wee idea, the section hasn't been done. So, you can see the damage, swirls, etc. all on this panel. Pretty heavy swirls and done there's a bit of a difference and you can actually see the the difference uh, yeah absolutely massive improvement in clarity and swirls all the way yeah absolute night and day difference between them yeah what a difference. So now we've got that worked out, it's just a case of repeating that process throughout the entire car now. So yeah, I'm going to get started on that time as now, Jesus, half past one. So uh, yeah, as well as polishing, it takes a long time to do it. It's time intensive, uh, but nothing else for it. So I'm just going to get hammered into it and get it finished. Okay, what I'm going to do is very quickly talk through what the paint correction actually entails. If you can look at it, can I objectively imagine that as being a huge expanded uh, kind of layer of bodywork and paint. Now you've got your, your metal, your base, which could be your plastic bumper, it could be your metal doors, it could be a bit of plastic trim that surrounds uh, your doors. Uh, an aluminium bonnet, basically any part of the car bodywork. On top of that you'll have a primer, then you'll have your actual paint, your, your colour of your car, and on top of it you'll have your clear coat. The clear coat makes up the, basically the mass amount. Uh, most, most manufacturers vary on the amount of clear coat they put on their car, but your clear coat is generally a larger layer than your paint is. So, 
when we're talking about swirls, your swirls are very minute, so they are little indents in your clear coat. So when they go all the way along there, so if we go all the way along, now these are caused by incorrect washing, uh, bits of kind of dirt net that's trapped in your uh, sponges which shouldn't be getting used. Now what you're doing when you're machine polishing is you're abrading away that clear coat. When the sun comes down, what well, we do get off it in Scotland, the sun comes down and bounces off these wee, basically mini wee valleys, wee grooves. So your sun rays come down, bounce and then reflect back up and that's what catches your eye. That's how you see all these wee swirls. So what we do when we machine polish, you can imagine this is my polish and my abrasive pad on the polisher is we're taking away the minimum amount of clear coat we can take away to achieve the goal. Alright, and the goal is, of course, to get the paintwork as flat as possible so when that sun bounces, it bounces off the, the surface doesn't bounce off anything inside, so when it meets your eye, you're getting that bounce back. That's when I show you the videos of the lights, you see the light is bouncing clean off and going straight back into the camera lens, which shows it's bouncing off, that area's been corrected. Now, that's a relatively simple and easy correction. So what I'll do is I'll put the clear coat back up to in a factory. So, say we've got some swirls, got a big deep scratch, some more swirls. Just ignore that section there now. So, what you then need to do is you need to gauge how much you can remove, okay? You can remove that, it's fine, it's not through to the paint, it's not through the primer, but what you're then doing is leaving a tiny little amount of clear coat on that. If any corrective work's needed in the future, it's going to be so thin. Okay, so what you need to do is you need to gauge what you're looking to do. So if you then take your polish and your pad and you remove that section away and then what you're left with is your flat surface but when the sun's coming down it's still bouncing about that and going away which gives the illusion of a great big horrible dirty scratch. So there's other options. You can keep on taking that away to the point which you're leaving the clear coat really, really thin. Or what you can do is you can round, which is focusing in on the area very precisely, and you're rounding that over. So when the sun comes down and it's bouncing, it's bouncing away. If that was a big direct scratch like that, when the sun comes down, it bounces about inside, which is then what catches your eye. So when you're rounding it, you're still leaving enough clear coat either side, you're focusing in on the scratch area, and then, of course, you're able to reduce the, the, the scratch to the point in which you need to go looking for it to see it. That's a, that scratches which can, of course, be removed, or, sorry, can be greatly improved on. So, take it back to perfect paint. Somebody goes by and keys your car. That's putting a scratch all the way through. Second it hits that, there is nothing that can be done. That's needing body shop, it's needing respade, it's needing a touch up job. That is basically a very simple, gives you an idea of how the paint correction process actually works when you look at the, the different types of paint that's there. The other option you have, again if I take away this big horrible key mark, is if you've got a car, it could be an older car, and it's got a whole load of swirls all over it, so you're needing to take it to this point, which is leaving you not a lot of clear coat left. So yes, the car will look fantastic, but 
All it takes is for another wee scuff and it's straight through the clear coat and into the paint. Your other option you have is to apply a ceramic coating on the top of it. Now the ceramic coating might only add another half of what the clear coat is, but based on what coating you pick, you could pick a, a coating which is a 9H hardness, which is approximately about two times harder than your clear coat is. If there's a 9H goes on there, that needs to be layered with a layer of light on the top of it. So then that's adding yet another layer of ceramic coating on it. And that then acts as a sacrificial layer to your clear coat. That ceramic coating should be harder than your clear coat. It's not scratch proof, but when it gets scratched, it should be not as bad as it would be without the ceramic coating being there. So that's going to protect the clear coat. So then what needs done is that needs taken away by machine polishing and then the ceramic coat put back on. Done that for a couple of customers now and came up perfect. The, the ceramic coat has basically protected the clear coat underneath. Again, nothing's going to protect somebody going by with a key, screwdriver, something like that. Absolutely no way. That's going to bring it all the way down to the metal. But somebody walking by with a zip, a wee stud on their jeans and grazing past the car, yeah, that's going to certainly limit the damage that's going to be done. So, as, so it could limit it to that point, so it's going straight through the coating, but not onto your clear coat, or it could limit through and then give you there. Still acting as that sacrificial layer. Hope that gives you a wee bit of insight as to what I'm actually doing with this Audi today. That's not getting the ceramic coating put on it, that's just getting the, the protection work done on it. So, as, so that the now, with the way it is, all the swirls which I've showed you, is probably about that the now. So what I'm then having to do is, through all those passes I'm doing with the polisher, it's removing a wee bit of time until that eventually gets all those wee dips away. That might be a single stage at that point, you've still got a few wee bits, but think of the amount of protect or sorry, think of the amount of the clear coat that's been removed from that and the time it takes to polish each panel, that's you then left with small indentations and imperfections in the clear coat and there's much less chance of when the light comes down it's bouncing and hitting. So when it hits one it goes that way but the lights large majority of the light is hitting a flat, perfect surface. That's when you say you're given the, the 75 to 80% correction level because 80% of the, the paint is nice, perfectly flat and the other 20-25% has got little indentations in it which are the wee swirls which would need possibly a second stage to get down to and then of course if you've got your scratch that's definitely going to be needing two stages to actually remove. Hopefully that made sense. If it didn't then let me know and I'll, uh, I'll talk, I'll try and talk it through, I'll try and think of another analogy that might make it a bit easier to, to understand but uh, yeah I'm, I'm hoping that made sense so when you're watching what I'm doing you've got an idea of what I'm doing which is why at the end of it when I show you the car the the large majority of it looks perfect, but there's still some wee lines. You might be wondering, why haven't they came out? Why haven't they been sorted? Basically because it's a single stage correction that's got done on this. It's not a full correction. And that's essentially the, the kind of mechanics behind it, about how the, the clear coat is being removed to give that finish.
Well, that's the car all done. Uh, I didn't do any of the vlog stuff last night. Uh, I was in a rush to try and get home so I could see a wee boy before bath time and bedtime. So, I uh, thought I would uh, treat the treat the missus and at the same time and go out and uh, bring her up to the unit and treat her to a, a coffee, which uh, she's now making. Come on, chop chop, eat coffee then. <laughs> Uh, yeah, car is all done, it looks spectacular, so I shall go over and show the bonnet, which was uh, particularly in a bad area. You can see on it there that there is uh, all the, the kind of DA hazing, or rotary hazing, uh, that was on the bonnet. Yesterday is all gone. The connection levels are pretty good on it. It's uh, for a single stage enhancement. It's kind of right on check for what you would expect of it. Uh, around about the kind of 70, 75 percent connection levels. I spent a lot of time on the the boot lid. You can probably gather there was a lot of deep, heavy scratches on it. It's a low down area of the car. It's a bit of it gets seen. Uh, so spent a bit of time on that. I've also spent a bit of time, there was a big deep scratch along there, there's still a tiny wee faint bit of it along there. It's as much as I was willing to take away, uh, as I spoke about on my wee graph yesterday. Uh, you need to get that fine balance between removing the, the, the defects and getting the car looking good and also being able to use it as a daily driver. If it was a show car, absolutely, I would be uh, removing much of the lacquer as possible, getting it looking absolutely perfect, and then advising the customer to stick a ceramic coating over the top of it. But it's uh, not within the budget, it's not what the customers want, so the car has been done, and yes, as I said, it's looking absolutely fantastic. So, good day for Blackbeard's Detail today. My wife resigned from her job, so... Uh, we went out earlier on and dropped off all our uniform and all our kit and uh, yeah, I'm going to need to get her trained up on my black beards detailing skills uh, maybe start doing a lot of specialist interior stuff uh, steam cleaning, proper shampooing of carpets and maybe that can be my good ladies uh, forte but Hey oh, stay tuned, there's more of that to come. Again, thanks very much for watching. Uh, if you liked it, remember to hit subscribe, uh, press the wee bell as well, and you'll get a notification whenever I upload a new video. Again, if there's anything I'm doing you don't like, anything that's rubbish, please let me know. And uh, yeah, very thank you very much for watching. Goodbye.